Hey guys, Corey with Famous Media. Today we're looking at the Black Magic Ursa. So a big shout out going to CSI Rentals in Manhattan and Brooklyn for getting this to me. There is no reviews right now currently that are full hands-on reviews like I'm about to give you on the Black Magic Ursa. It's still kind of in pre-order stage, but it's already been released, if that makes any sense. There's not very many in circulation yet. So a big shout out to CSI Rentals in Manhattan and Brooklyn. There's the logo right down there. Fantastic company for all your rental needs. They've, they've just hooked me up. Now. The Black Magic Ursa is just a production monster. It is the same sensor as the Black Magic production camera. Now, I just want to go ahead and give out this disclaimer. I like red, I don't discriminate against red, and I apologize if I offend anybody with my following statements, but I just want to inform you that the Black Magic production camera has better value and overall a sharper sensor with more dynamic range. I did a Black Magic versus uh, red comparison between the production and the Scarlet. And the red was just clear out sharper, had slightly better dynamic range, is much easier to use and lighter and more practical in every way. Since this is the same sensor and has much better features, clearly puts this ahead of the red Scarlet. And at a $5,900 price point, so this is below six grand. This is half the price of the C300 and it does 1080p, 4K ProRes and RAW. And this will do what the Scarlet will not do. 60 frames a second, which is 60p in 4K ProRes. The only red you're gonna get that will do that at the cheapest amount is the Red Scarlet Dragon, which is gonna run you in the 24 to $25,000 range. We're talking about a camera that's less than $6,000. 12 gig SDI in and out, headphone jack. You got a 10 inch true 1080p screen right here that flips and angles and turns in and out. Dual C fast cards, which the one shortcoming of the camera. 60 gigabyte card for like $600, it'll get you like eight minutes of ProRes, four minutes of RAW. That's a shortcoming right now, but it'll work itself out as the cards become more available and cheaper. Let's go ahead and turn this around. You're getting three monitors. With a Red Scarlet, you're getting one. With a C300, you're getting one. You're getting a 10 inch monitor and two five inch monitors. You can be checking all your settings here, watching what you're recording here, and if you turn the camera around, you can have an audio guy running the audio meters and a focus puller working this screen. This is a three-man crew or a two-man crew or even a one-man operation. It's like a one-man band operation too. So if you think about what you're getting for the price, there isn't a camera on the planet that will touch the Ursa. Now those are just based on specs and just based on what we think it will do. Will it really perform well? Considering it's the same sensor as the Blackmagic production camera, it should. We're gonna find out if it will, but I wanna to touch base on one more thing. If you take out these four Allen hex wrench screws right here, you can pull out the sensor assembly, which I'm going to take this lens off just for a second. These four screws here, you can pull this whole assembly off and the sensor is attached to a heat sink and a fan, which means when Blackmagic releases a sensor, in the near distant future that has way better low light performance and shoots possibly five or 6K and possibly 120 frames a second black magic, they're just gonna send it to you in assembly and you're just gonna swap them in and out in five seconds, literally. So this camera is the only user upgradable camera. User upgradable. That means you can, like I said, change a sensor out when it's available. You, you buy the sensor and you change it out. That is a bargain in itself for less than $6,000. Right now I'm running the Switronics Pro battery to the four pin power. Um, I'm not running a V-mount in the back, but you can. I just don't have it right now. So we're gonna hit the streets and see what you can do. Same features as the Blackmagic production camera, 4K ProRes and HQ422 LT and Proxy. Does 1080p in the same formats. It also does the 4K RAW and the 4000 by 2160. So. Everything else is the same. You've got your iris, focus, record, play, um, and of course to control your f-stop and rewind and fast forward right there. 
You can turn your display off to set input for your 12 gig SDI so you can see on the monitor as an input and not from the camera if you wanted to bypass it. So uh, it also does the focus peaking and it's got a separate button for that so you don't have to double tap the focus button anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on uh, just to give you guys a little quick preview of the screen. You've got your histogram exposure, your focus meter, and your constantly running uh, meter for audio. So it's pretty cool there. We're gonna get this powered up and we're gonna hit the streets. Let's see what she can do. So I'm looking at the screen here. I love it. The audio meters, as you, I'm gonna turn around so you can see it. You can see I'm using the internal mic, which uh, we don't know how it sounds yet because I haven't used it, but we're not clipping on the audio because we can see that. We can see our focus, our exposure looks gorgeous. We're right in the center where we need to be. Um, I've got all my specs right up here, what I'm shooting in. I'm gonna do my first test at 60p. We're gonna give you guys some slow motion. The only thing I don't like, which kind of bothers me uh, about the camera, is that it has false color display on the 10-inch on the monitor. Now, false color is great. It really is great. It's an amazing feature to have, but you can't turn it off. You just cannot turn the false color off. They gotta figure that out. That's the only thing I don't like. So far, everything else is great. I'm gonna do some 60p. So I'm using the side five inch monitor to not only show you that a focus puller will have an easy time doing it, but a DOP could easily use the side of the screen too. See how that looks when we pull it into our 30p timeline. Man, this thing is heavy. Let you guys know that it weighs about 16.5 pounds. Of course, that's before you add the quick release plate from Black Magic, which weighs a little over two pounds. By the time you got the plate on there and a battery, you're looking about 19 pounds. You add a lens, you're right at 20 pounds. Thank God my Surui monopod holds 28 pounds and the Benro S8 head will do 19 pounds. It's kind of maxing the head out, but it can, it can handle it. We're gonna do a little bit more 60p footage. Maybe I'll get some more shots of these cars blazing by. This camera is just a monster. The screen is huge. It's super accurate. It is the best on-camera screen I have ever used. The Blackmagic screen is better than the C300 screen, which I do think the C300 is one of the best I've ever used. But this is bigger and better in every way. Blackmagic has nailed a home run with the features of the camera, for sure. So here I am using the side screen again. Why? Because I can. They also don't have to flip out that 10-inch monitor. You got your SDI out here and your 12 volt out, of course, your audio inputs for your XLR mics. I just figured I'd point that out right quick. It's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna go here on the side five inch screen, which is what your focus puller would use. And since we're using the Canon CNE Cineprime lens, which I do recommend is the best quality lens on the planet for shooting film, it has got 11 aperture blades and it goes all the way down to 1.2. So you can see it's green lettering and on the other side for the camera operator DOP, it's white, but you can see all the stuff for focus pulling. This is the screen right here, of course, and uh, you can go in the menu, change any menu features that the DOP can. You can also check out your audio meters, your histogram, uh, anything else you can possibly imagine is like right here at your fingertips. We're gonna go ahead and hit display, which will allow us to shoot from this screen. Although the record button is on the outside of the 10 inch monitor, I'll hit that now. We're shooting in raw. Raw at 1.2. And they say that the 4K sensor in the production camera doesn't do good in low light. Well, this is the same sensor. It's doing pretty good. All you gotta do is buy good, high quality, fast prime lenses, and you can shoot in low light. Just remember, the difference between a 1.2 and a 2.8 lens is about two and a third of a stop. So here we go, we're shooting back in 24p. We're gonna test the low light abilities here. 
It's gonna shoot at 400 ASA at 1.2. Really do wish there was a way to turn off these false colors. Don't really need them on the streets, but. But if you're looking at the screen and you don't want to see the false colors, the good thing about the Ursa is you could easily just go over here to the side of the camera and hit display, and you got dual display. You can use that to check the colors and reference back and forth, so that's pretty cool. And then if I'm shooting right now, let's say I want to check out my audio or my exposure, Instead of using the Blackmagic production and cinema camera features that are on the same screen, it's a separate screen. So I just hit display and it shows me my histogram exposure, my focus and my audio, and of course the time that I've been recording for. So it's got your timestamp right there as well. It's like your own little workstation here. ProRes is really high quality here. I'm shooting in film mode as well. So it's getting a little dark here. We're gonna shoot over to Times Square where it's a lot brighter. We're gonna get some shots over there. So here we are at Times Square. We're down in Union Square and it was just getting a little too dark. So we're up here now where it's brighter and we're gonna continue uh, to do some shots at the Ursa. Uh, this thing's a tank. It's really heavy. It's like a workout. I mean, it's really heavy. I had to switch out my monopod, my videographer, and use the tripod because it's just too heavy to balance. So we're gonna take some shots in RAW. We're gonna get some shots, all the fun stuff going on here. We're gonna test some 60p again. Uh, it's gonna be great. But first I wanna go over some of the features here which we kind of left out last time. You have to think about the 12 gig SDI input, the 12 gig SDI output headphone, which is a quarter inch TS jack for monitoring. You've got your iris and focus peaking and control on the outside of the screen. You've got a 10 inch display right here, um, which you can turn all your display features on and off. You can't turn the false coloring on and off. Um, another thing you have to look at too is you've got your 12 volt output for power and you also have your audio inputs right here on the side of the camera. Your power button, your slate to enter your metadata. There's your headphone jack, your audio guys independent controls to change from solo uh, or to mute a channel and of course the volumes your SDI outputs in the back, your time code in and out. And it's just a fantastic, you got your uh, three eight threads at the top of the handle, which is removable. Of course, your battery power goes in the back. The camera is just fantastic and it's a monster to shoot with. This love, the camera is just amazing to use, heavy. But once it's mounted to a tripod and you're using it, it is fantastic. It's got all the same image quality features of the production camera, but a bunch of added features, which the most important to me is the 10 inch screen with false color. Turn my zebras on. And the two five inch monitors are touch screen, the same as the production camera and the cinema camera. There we go. Zebras are on. With the zebras on in the false color, I can see which shadows are too dark and also go in between so I can get back most of the highlights, if not all of them, and not go too dark on the shadows. And I can use the false colors and the histogram. So many tools here to get your image right. It really is a dream to use and much easier to use than say the Red Scarlet. And like I said earlier, the best screen ever. Like, it's just amazing. I had to bring it down to F6.2, maybe 5.6. Cause it's really bright in Times Square. Here we are in the middle of the night, like 7.30, sun's long set, it's pitch black outside practically. Times Square, it's super bright. She doesn't want her face on camera. <laughs> I'm 
try to get as close to f1.2 as I can. It's just so bright here. I'm gonna switch to my wide angle Tokina, which is an f2.8, so I can get some wide shots. As you can see, depth of field is not a problem. Super 35 sensor is amazing, and we're shooting at f2.0 right now. So we just swapped out for the Tokina. Gonna get some shots on that. There we go. Something I just learned just now is you, you play back a clip and you wanna get out of that, you just hit the record button once, it'll take you back to the recording screen. It will not start the recording process, it'll just get you out of the playback menu. Nice wide shot, 11 mils close to like 18 to 20 mil range. Shooting a while, this Chronix battery still got half life, so you should be able to get about four hours of shooting on this camera with this one battery. So not too shabby, right? Here we are gonna take a shot right here in the street, Times Square. And I love being able to switch over and look at my exposure on a separate screen as the main video screen. So I can see what I'm recording, I can check my focus peaking. I can check my zebras and my highlights, my false colors, and look right over at the other screen and see my time code. I can see my audio meters to show me if the internal audio or the XLR mics I've got plugged in are clipping. I can also see the focus. I got the audio bars in the bottom, full histogram on the audio, so that's great too. It's great. This camera has more features than the Red Scarlet, uh, which is well north of $18,000. This camera is a gem. It really is a pleasure to shoot with this camera. Gonna get a nice wide shot here. It's where the ball drops. You guys get to see where the ball drops. This is cool. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Here we are using the side screen. Just love the versatility of this camera. It's like a full editing studio. I've got two screens giving me all the information that I would ever need. The 12 gig SDI input, the 12 gig SDI output, headphone monitoring, three man team, it'll accommodate. The two screens while you're recording dual CFast cards. I don't, I won't allow the weight to be a problem for me. I will figure that out because of how awesome this camera is for the money. I'm gonna get one really good wide shot here. I'm gonna take one more at F4 just to be safe. It's really bright here at Times Square. The Ursa truly is a tripod camera. I think you could probably use the Glidecam X20 vest. The X20 and the X30 would do it. The X10 is too light. But if you get yourself a really good X20 or 30 vest set up uh, with a sled, you'll be good to go if you want to carry this around. Or a really good hefty duty monopod. Of course, I got it on this tripod, it weighs a ton. So let's start things off with the low light test. First up, ASA 400, no noise whatsoever. Moving along to ASA 800, still no noise at all. You'd have to hire a forensic technician to find any traces of noise, and I doubt he would. 
Moving along, bumping it in post to ASA 1600. The image is starting to slightly overexpose and there's still very little if any noise. Kicking it even higher to ASA 3200. The image is starting to blow out and there's still very little noise. Do you see how well this camera does? Now let's go ahead and start the rolling shutter test and of course, there is no rolling shutter. Gotta love Blackmagic and their 4K global shutter sensor. Let's go ahead and freeze that frame. Ah, no rolling shutter. Awesome. Moving along to a very dark room. I mean, darker than any wedding reception. ASA 200, very underexposed. Kicking it to ASA 400, still very much underexposed, but the noise levels are almost non-existent. Moving along to ASA 800, you can see the noise is starting to creep up into the mid-tones. However, you can start to expose the image properly here. Let's kick it to ASA 3200 with no on-camera light and just a little bit of noise reduction in a very dark room. This is impressive. Now let's go ahead and use my on-camera Genera 500D and look what we've got. ASA 400 in a pitch black room practically and the image looks amazing. So let's go ahead and start the ISO sharpness test and this camera looks so sharp I'm going to need to wear some eye protection. Let's go ahead and crop in 300% and take a look and there is no doubt this is one of the sharpest if not the sharpest 4K cameras on the planet. It just resolves so much detail. Now I know these shots are kind of weird, nothing really creative, just some milk in a glass and dropping some water in a bowl, but it's kind of cool because you get to see how nice the slow-mo really works when you convert that 60p down to 24. I even slowed it down 25% more on top of that. Looks pretty good. The Blackmagic Ursa truly is a monster of a camera and a dream come true for the film industry. Delivering its two 5-inch touchscreens, its 1080p full 10-inch screen with false color recognition, focus peaking, and zebras, the only camera that's user upgradable to change the sensor. It comes with the Blackmagic production 4K sensor which is clearly sharper than the Red Scarlet or the C300 with more dynamic range and overall just more bang for buck and even slightly better in low light. This camera truly is the performer for Blackmagic design. You can have a one man, a two man, or a three man crew operate this camera. It's got built in XLR and phantom power and the preamps are awesome. It's got four pin power in and out and you can put Anton Bauer batteries in the back. It's got time code in and out, SDI in and out, and it's 12 gig SDI. It also has dual CFAS card slots, which makes this camera future proof, not to mention the audio histogram and the exposure histogram on the inner five inch screen makes shooting super easy. If you can manage to hold the weight of this camera, it truly is the best 4K camera on the planet. So guys, the Blackmagic Ursa is the camera to get, especially if you're in music video or film production. If you're a run and gun wedding videographer, maybe not. It's a little heavy and that's about the only downfall with the Camry is its weight. Now, if we could shave five to eight pounds off this camera, this would be the end all camera for everyone, but it's not for everyone. What it is though, is everything the production camera is except the run and gun. So here's the thing, if you want to run and gun and do weddings, the production camera is for you. If you're gonna be on a tripod shooting a wedding or a music video and it's gonna sit and not move, then it's for you and a film, of course. This camera has got all the features. Basically, you can record, change aperture, focus peaking from the left side menu on the outside of the 10 inch screen. You've got a 10 inch screen with record and all your different feature buttons right here. You got a second screen in here to change your focus peaking display, dual CFAS card slots, your audio guy and your focus puller has got all kinds of stuff here. Another screen, SDI in and out, 12 gig, uh, headphone quarter inch jack for monitoring, takes Anton Bauer batteries. You got the plate in the back, your SDI time code in and out, phantom power. You got four 3 8 female mounting positions on the top of the handle. The handle is removable and you can remove this sensor. Yes, four Allen hex key slots. The whole sensor pulls out with a heat assembly. It almost looks like a processor in a ATX motherboard. You just, you pull this out, it's got the sensor and the heat sink pressed against it and the connectors to the heat sink and fan inside. You can literally change the sensor in this camera. So when Blackmagic decides to give us five or 6K, better low light performance, and of course more frames per second, say 120 frames Blackmagic, 120 frames, you can change it out, it's user changeable. It takes less than five minutes practically. And 
that's an amazing thing to have because Black Magic has released a lot of different things over the years. They're getting better and better. I know this is going to be the next thing they release is going to be a low light sensor. I'm telling you, watch out. Black Magic is going to have a higher 5K res sensor with low light. I'll bet money on it. Why else would they have this option available? They didn't waste the uh, R&D on this feature for nothing. Believe that. So the Black Magic Ursa camera is just a monster. Is this camera better than the Black Magic production camera? That's relative. They're slightly different. Is this camera better than the Red Scarlet? That's a relative term, but it's cheaper, it does more, it's sharper, and in almost every way is better. Just the name Black Magic isn't as popular as Red. That's, that's the issue that we're having here. Let's look past how new they are and who Red is, and let's just forget about all that. It's a sharper sensor as we proved with the production camera. It's got more dynamic range and it's better in low light and it costs 25% of what the red costs. So in that aspect alone, the production camera beat the Scarlet. And since this camera has way more features in the same sensor, it is a better camera. The Blackmagic Ursa is the monster. If you're looking to shoot films with and you want good low light and good sharpness, this is the camera for you. It comes in a PL mount, an EF mount, it's just a monster. I'm telling you that it's got a better screen than any screen I've ever used. It's better than the Scarlet. It's better than the C300. The only thing it lacks is it's heavy. But with all those features, if you're concerned with weight, then you're not focused on your objective. But in all honesty, it's a monster. So hopefully you guys found this review helpful. And if you did, you want to purchase the Ursa or any of the lenses we've reviewed here today, I'll put those links down there in the information box. Please use those links to support the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'm Corey of Famous Media in a chilly October evening here in Times Square. Happy shooting.